Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how you can build a search like experience in Canvas Power Apps with SharePoint as a data source. The reason I said search like is because of challenges related to delegation when working with SharePoint as a data source. Using one single search box, which will allow the user to search or filter across multiple columns, single line of text, choice, lookup, and more. So let's check it out in action. In my Power App, I have a gallery that is connected to a SharePoint list that has information around work progress tracking. I have my standard title column, which is of type text, which has the name of the task. Assigned to is a person type column. Department, I have made this a lookup column. So it's looking up to an item in a different SharePoint list. And then progress is a column of type choice. And the gallery in my Power App is representing that same information. The data source that is connected in my Power App is that same SharePoint list. Search across all of these different column types. I have a search box. It's a standard text input control. Hint text. I have called it as search. I've also included an emoji. There is an option called clear button. I've turned that on. So when I enter some text in the text box, I have the ability to clear it. And I have a button which I would like the user to select to search across these different column types to perform a delegable operation. And delegable basically means the query that I'm performing will work on a large data set. In this scenario, my data source is a SharePoint list. If my query is not delegable, Power Apps will only be able to work with the first 500 records in that data source. And this limit can be extended to a maximum of 2000. However, when I'm performing a query against my data source, I need to ensure that it's delegable in order for Power Apps to query across the entire data set. Plus, delegation adds to performance. Power Apps under the hoods performs optimized loading of data for us. So with respect to SharePoint, if I try and use the search function, so search my SharePoint list where the text entered in the text box and the columns that I would like to search on, I'll pick the title column in this scenario. Notice the moment I do that, I get a delegation warning. If I was to change this to the in query by leveraging the filter function and the in operator, I will still get a delegation warning. The reason is simple. With SharePoint, search or in are not delegable. Yes, you can call flow to perform the query for you on a very large data set. Yes, you can load data in collections. A collection is local storage. It's stored on your device. Instead of using the search function or the in operator, one option that we have is by using starts with. The text that I want to check is in my title column. And the starting string would be the text that the user enters in that text box. It's a starts with operator, where the text and the title column begins with whatever I enter. For example, draft. But if I search for proposal, you will notice it does not return that result. Let's take an example of the choice column. If I try the same formula, so I'll apply an or condition because I want to combine all the different searching capabilities. Starts with, this time I'll pick my progress column, which is a choice column. So I need to put a dot and get its value. 
starts with the text entered in the text box. Now notice the moment I do that, the query is not delegable. So I'll go back to my original formula here. And my intent is that whenever the user clicks on search, only then I want to perform the search. So when this button is clicked, I will go ahead and set a variable. I'll call it var progress. I will check to see if the text entered in my text box, if it is blank, I will set this variable to blank. Else, I'll use the lookup function. Lookup, there's a function called choices. Choices of my SharePoint list, which is work progress tracker dot my column name, which is progress. And here, the text entered in that text box is this in this record dot value. I'll click format text. So when the search button is clicked, I'm setting a variable. If the text entered for searching is blank, the variable is blank. If not, it will go and search in the choices and get one value back. I'll also set another variable here called var search text. This would be the text that I enter in that text box. For the items property of my gallery, starts with the column title. This I will change it to that variable. I will add an or condition. Now my second condition is for that choice column, which is progress. So I will say progress dot value is equal to that variable where progress dot value. And I will close the function for or I'll click format text. Now bear in mind where progress dot value can also be returned as blank. So at that moment, it will search for everything where the progress value is blank. So if you do not want that to happen, you can stitch an AND function along with this. If the value in that variable is not equal to blank, comma, our condition, format text. So let's preview this. I will search for block. Notice the search doesn't take place until I click on search. When I select it, it will search for the text block in the progress column. So I have a status blocked. So it picked that one. And then it will also search in the title column if the title begins with the text block. Now, when I clear the search, I want the search button to be clicked automatically. So for my search text box, there is an on change property here. If is blank self dot text go ahead and select my search button so it will automatically click that search button when i click x and it will reset my filters i'll search for progress click search notice it picks in progress so when search is clicked i have that variable that I'm setting. So right here, I have a label that shows the value of that variable. So the user gets an indicator as to what they are searching on because I can always change my search, but until and unless I click search, it won't apply. Next, let's try this on a lookup column. Now the functionality here is going to be very similar to the choice column. When the search button is clicked, I will set a variable called where department. If the text entered in the text box is blank, this will be blank. I will again use lookup. So lookup choices of my SharePoint list dot my lookup column. So this will give me all my choices. And my condition is the text entered in the search box, is it in this record dot value? I'll click format text. 
Now bear in mind, I do not get a delegation warning here because I'm setting things in a variable. The reality is that in is not delegable, but I know that the list that I'm looking up to will not have more than my delegation limit, like 500 or 2000. So I'm taking that calculated risk in this scenario. Now that I have this variable ready for my gallery, I will literally repeat this pattern, but point to my department variable and point to my department column. That completes my formula. Now it will also search in departments. Let's search for legal. You can see it's getting me all the data where the department contains the text legal or the progress had that text or the task title begins with that text. For a person type column, text that I enter, I want to search for users in my active directory. So for that, I will go to data sources and connect to Office 365 users. Now that I have the connection in my Power App, when search is clicked, I will set another variable here called where assigned to pattern will be similar. If there is no text entered in my text box, set this variable to blank else. I will use the function office 365 users dot search user v2. My search term will be the text entered in the text box. And how many results you want to return? I'll just say one. And from this, I'll do a dot value. Now this function returns tabular data. I'll just say, give me the first. So now this will return a record. I'll click format text. That's my formula. And now to apply that filter condition, I'll repeat our pattern, replace this with where assigned to here, where assigned to queries office 365 users. So I will get all the properties of that user's profile and I will leverage the mail property. My column, which is assigned to, which is a person type column. Go and get the email property from that column and compare it to where assigned to dot mail. Let's try this out. So I'll search, let's say Taylor. So this will now go and apply a search condition to search for a user who has the name Taylor. You can see it's the last name in this scenario. That's the person it's leveraging to filter on. The search is being applied across all the columns. So notice it's returning all the tasks that are assigned to James Taylor. It's also searching where the task title begins with Taylor. It's also searching in department. It's also searching in progress. So it's a one search box experience. And whenever the user lands on this screen, so on visible, I will make sure that the variable where search text is set to blank and select my search button so that it goes and sets all those variables. So by default, it's empty. So this search experience works across all my different column types in SharePoint. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.